Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Peter de Guntz, who is the Managing Director of Takala. Takala is a technology services provider and IT consulting company, which works with managed services and cloud specialists to deliver a range of IT services. Um, welcome to the jam, Peter. Yeah, thanks for having me. No worries. So to start off, um, for an IT manager that hasn't worked with Takala before, could you just tell us what your key solutions are and um, kind of like a brief overview of the company? Yeah, sure. So Takala is an Aussie tech services company. Um, we've been around for almost 25 years now. Um, still a pretty tightly kept secret because we don't tend to sort of market ourselves too heavily. Um, but our background is really um, consulting and advisory. That's where we came from, helping people create you know, strategic roadmaps that plan technology investments into the future, normally looking sort of three to five years out, um, and really ensuring that those technology plans are really, really closely aligned with the core business strategy and business objectives. So. That's how we sort of started out. Um, as we evolved the business, we started to help people execute on those strategies and sort of deliver the services and, and capabilities that they needed. And so that was probably the big change for us. Um, and that was that was around about 15 years ago even now. So it's been a long time since that evolution. Um, today we've grown to be a bit over 100 people. We work all the way across Australia and in fact globally. Um, we deliver a range of capabilities across private and public cloud. So you know, things like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, um, you know, software as a service solutions, of course, and, and DR and backup and those sorts of things. Um, we also provide a full suite of managed services. So everything from really end user support, desktop support, network management, all the way up to cloud and application stacks. Um, or if we're short for time, we just say end-to-end -end managed services. Um, and in addition to that, we have a range of communication and security services. So connectivity to offices, obviously provision of internet um, and, and connectivity to data centers and into, into cloud environments, which is a really important part of today's architectures. Um, of course, unified communications, those sorts of solutions. Um, and then on the security front, we're really dealing with a range of technical controls. So, you know, cloud security, endpoint security, um, a range of kind of monitoring and, and kind of security awareness capabilities as well for our clients. Um, predominantly work with mid-sized firms. We'd love to work with companies who are kind of progressive and growing and, you know, kind of striving to, to achieve more. Um, majority of our clients are between 100 and 1,000 employees. That's, that's sort of the majority of where we spend our time. Um, and we, we have really close relationships with those clients and really long-term relationships, which is what we enjoy. Right, yeah. And um, one of your primary functions is to help uh, organizations transition to a dynamic distributed modern workplace um, so how how do you go about that yes yeah, so I think that's taken a little bit of a different flavor um, these days with with COVID so obviously we've all seen the impact that's had this year um, and in particular obviously the last six months as to I suppose working arrangements um, so modern workplace and these sorts of concepts and the sort of anywhere and any device at any time you know, uh, it's been around for a long time. I think it's getting accelerated heavily with with the assessment that companies are making on how to respond to COVID long term. So the business leaders that, that, you know, I speak to, they're certainly all planning for a return to the office and they look forward to that day, I would say, that a bit, bit more normality comes back. But I think there's also a recognition that there is a fundamental shift that's occurred in people's, you know, behaviours, their routines, their family lives, um, and their attitudes towards work. So what that means from a technology point of view is the concept of making sure that your team can do their job anywhere in the world on any device um, is really actually now receiving a much higher priority. So I think what that means, a robust modern workplace solution sort of means that your team needs to access their applications, access their data, get their job done um, at any location to the same calibre that they used to you know, be able to do in the office and, and sort of have the expectation of receiving the same services and the same quality of services and, and importantly, the same quality of support, um, no matter where they are now. And I think that's sort of a presumption that's been built into people's strategies. Um, so there are some critical gaps that I think COVID highlighted because um, people kind of rushed into this mode without necessarily the, the normal design and planning. So. Things like unified communications um, uh, have become absolutely critical. So keeping your team collaborated and connected, um, you're seeing a lot of investments in those areas. The management and support, as I touched on before, I would say equally critical because most support solutions and, and even the way people structure their organizations 
were predicated on people being in the office to get help with, with tech. So really remote support, um, absolutely critical, um, making sure you can manage a device no matter where it is and making sure that that person can access the support they need to do their job on a sort of 24 by seven basis, which is, which is obviously something that we do in the managed services side of our business. Um, and also ensuring, you know, even though that device is no longer potentially coming into the office, that you've got, you know, good governance, asset management, compliance, and, and sort of control over that machine, which is also important from a security perspective. So that's, that's a big shift. Um, and the other thing I think it's forced people to think about is from a security perspective, again, you, you kind of had this assumption that people were in offices and you're trying to protect those offices and you're trying to protect your data centers. Now really the thinking has to be, I'm protecting my users, I'm protecting my data, I'm protecting my applications and I'm protecting my devices, even though again, they could be sort of anywhere on the end of an internet connection. So I think from a recommendation perspective, it's really ensuring you really think that through and what, what those impacts are um, and making sure you've got a really cohesive strategy that addresses some of those things that I just mentioned, of course, there are, there's more to it, but um, what that will give you then is, is kind of an optimal environment, which really promotes productivity and efficiency working remotely, as opposed to sort of just being able to work. Right, yeah. And you mentioned managed services just then. Um, so I want to focus a little bit on that. Um, Takala is a leader in managed services. Um, so could you maybe tell me what makes itself uh, your service so effective? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I will tout our, uh, tout our horn for a minute because we're just fresh off the back of a uh, number one MST win for uh, Red Market, so that's, that's exciting. Um, I think the, you know, the things that we've done over the years have been quite carefully curated around that, um, but, but I think the unifying piece is actually customer centricity, um, which sounds obvious, but, but I think a lot of technology companies get carried away with the technology side of things and, and not are not as focused on the user as, as I believe that we are. So from, from the, I guess from our perspective, it comes all the way from the leadership down. It is how we set our strategies. It's how we make our decisions, how we make our, how we've made our investments, you know, over, over the decades. Um, and, and the other thing I think it influences heavily is the culture. So, you know, we, we've been fortunate to bring together a group of people who sort of all believe in that, that power of customer centricity and customer service. Um, and, you know, they understand the role that, that their job plays in actually supporting our customers achieving their goal. Um, and they understand that if, you know, they're calling you for support and they need help with something, it's because there's something stopping them from doing their job and you need to sort of help them get on with it, so to speak. So I, I think that's really, really important. Um, you know, there's a range of technical skills, of course, that we have um, and a very, very broad team, so a good, good degree of capability. but. The customer focus is what actually tends to rally people around a particular problem or, or, or something that they're trying to solve um, and, and keeping that focus. So I think that's important. Um, the other thing I'd highlight from our perspective is we made a very, very conscious decision to, to remain 100% Australian operation, completely onshore, you know, foster new talent coming into the business and, and young people coming to the business and grow and develop them and, and all those sorts of things. And I think there's a long burn for stuff like that like it's taken us you know many many years to build that kind of engine of, of growing and, and supporting our, our company to support our customers but um you know we've we've sort of bucked the trend of everyone going offshore and, and things like that which which we really don't believe in um i think it's important from from our perspective you know i suppose for our customers we believe it delivers a higher grade of service a high, higher responsiveness higher quality but the other side of that is i really firmly believe we as, as all of the sort of companies and directors in Australia, we need to be conscious of the decisions we're making about are we fostering talent in our country and bringing people up through and bringing, building our capabilities so that we're competitive globally, you know, in the coming decades, or are we allowing, you know, these skills and knowledge and, and capabilities and intellectual property to be built overseas? Um, so we have a bit of an ideology around that as well, um, but, but certainly it comes straight back to our customer service as well. Right, yeah. And um, Takala has a high net promoter score. Could you tell me what you do to maintain that and how do you attract customers ongoing? Yeah, so I think, um, I suppose two parts of that. So I'll go attract first and then I'll go to, to maintain. So I think the, the feedback we overwhelmingly get from our customers as to what attracts people to Takala, um, 
we're able to demonstrate sort of really early on a really broad degree of capability and, and skills and maturity and experience. So I think that sort of, um, that's a little bit of a tick the box exercise, but I think it's an important tick the box exercise. Um, the thing that, that really um, differentiates us, I believe, is actually how much we invest in, in actually understanding their business from, from the word go. Um, and that's the feedback that we've had from clients as to why they chose us. So that, that knowledge and understanding of their business and their objectives and what they're trying to achieve by the time we get you know, a solution or a services proposal on the table to them, it's extremely accurate. It's very, very tailored to what they, what they, uh, what they believe they need. And it sort of shows you're listening as well, which I think is a key thing to any partnership. So I think that's from an attraction perspective, that's, that's key. Um, I think it's only once they start working with us, they get to experience the sort of other side of that. It's very hard to stand in front of someone and you know, say how capable we are or what kind of quality we deliver. It's something you really have to prove. So that is something that is once we engage, um, so you start to get the, the capability, you start to meet the team and the, the, the caliber of talent that we have in our business, which is outstanding. Um, the accountability and ownership that our team takes when, when, you know, when there's projects being delivered or, or in some cases when something goes wrong, you know, what we do about that, how we step in and how we make sure that's never going to happen again. I think that's important from a, you know, taking ownership perspective um, and the quality of work we deliver. So again, it's something you build over time with somebody. Um, so I think that enduring quality is very, very key to our customer set. I think the accountability is very, very key to our customer set. Um, you know, we, we measure it heavily. It's, it's measured on a weekly basis. It's tracked at the board level. Um, so we're looking at our MPS scoring, which is in the 60s and 70s um, range consistently, which is you know, up there with the highest in Australia. Um, and we track our customer attention um, fanatically as well, which, which sits well in excess of 95%, you know, year on, year out. So, um, yeah, I think it's something we focus very heavily on and, and our customers do, do give us a lot of feedback on how we're going, but also how, what we need to do to improve. And, and we listen to that and we act on it. Right, yeah. Cool. And finally, uh, if a partner or enterprise end user wanted to engage with Takala, what's the best way? Yeah, so I think, I think from an engagement perspective, sort of building on what, I, what I've already said, um, that sort of initial discovery session is, is key. So I would, I would sort of recommend to anybody who's, who's kind of thinking about talking to us or, or even just needs a bit of advice and opinion on what's going on in their business or they're thinking about building a strategy, um, reach out and book one of those sort of things. It's a very much a no obligation um, kind of exercise. It's really just designed to get to know the client for them to get to know a little bit about us. Um, and that's when we're starting the process of defining objectives um, and then we bring in the relevant kind of specialist as, as we need to, to engage from there. So even if there isn't a specific project going on, um, we're very happy to come and have a chat. And we know that, you know, as long as they know about us in the future, when they do need to talk to us, they're welcome to obviously bring us back in. So we, we're very um, philosophical about that, I think. Um, in terms of contact, all the usual suspects. So 1300 Takala, we've got the website there. Um, which we've got a range of engagement options to just sort of have a chat or, or you can actually go straight ahead and book discovery sessions and things like that. Um, so yeah, there's a range of ways you can, you can get in touch. Cool, perfect. Well, that concludes today's 10 Minute IT Jam with Takala Managing Director, Peter DeGunz. Thank you so much for coming on today, Peter. Thanks a lot, Nick. Cheers for that.